Outrageous. Democratically, that's what they did. Oh, Barack. We miss you. No, we don't. Oh, we he do. was a very unsuccessful American president, and his foreign policy was a catastrophe. Absolute catastrophe. Oh, I think he was really successful and didn't really he, brilliant and gave me hope for a better world. Didn't even manage to close Guantanamo Bay, which he promised to do, made a complete pig's ear of Syria and a, of the whole uh, Arab Spring. Uh, I'm not saying we did it brilliantly, but America lost global leadership in the Middle East and has allowed Putin to take over in terms of policy all, formation I think we could all be to blame for that, but I'd still rather have Barack Obama any single day of the week. I wouldn't let Trump look after my children, let alone my country. Um, I certainly wouldn't let him... I wouldn't let him near any of my family. The American people have voted Grabby for Helms. Mr Trump and he's got a democratic mandate and I respect democratic mandates. He has the right to be there. He has the right to be there, and I have the right to say uh, uh, that it is a terrible shame for the rest of the world. But it's in the British national interest that we get on with the United States. At what cost? This is Trump's gift, appeared to cause some confusion. <laughs> <laughs> I love Michelle Obama. And I think people should stop being horrible about Trump's wife. I think that I've heard, you know, sort of lots and lots of uh, time spent slagging her off, and I think it's totally unacceptable. Well, we can have a moment of agreement here, um, because I think Mrs Trump is an amazing representation of the American dream. Yeah. That she escapes from... It's very working-class beginning. She speaks well, so like... She escapes from Soviet yeah. uh, block, living in a concrete um, block in the yeah. Soviet Union, and becomes the first lady of the United States. I think that's so remarkable. Yeah, but and, the American dream has never quite delivered anyone to be the top of America other than to be married to the top of America. Mrs Clinton would have been in exactly the same position. Well, of she'd course, only, but... If she'd got the presidency, it would only because she was married to uh, <gasps> Mr Clinton. Oh, my God, she was a politician within her own right. She was an no, she human wasn't. rights lawyer. She was uh, an she amazingly complete... well-qualified woman complete... compared to this shyster. She was a complete coat tailor, and the American people, in their wisdom, rejected her. God bless them. Outrageous. Because today we are not merely transferring power Why does he do from that? one administration to another or from one party to another, but we are transferring power from Washington, D.C. and giving it back to you, the people. What a load of rubbish. You have got Wall Street men in your team. You don't give a toss about the American people. At all. And the idea that he is anti establishment is like saying that I'm from the establishment and you're not. But you are now. <laughs> you see, the truth is, you're part of the uh, metropolitan liberal elite. Uh, with my liberal tears, uh, crying my liberal tears. Absolutely, and I'm not. And, and, and <gasps> I'm very pleased not to be part of the liberal elite, which I think is most but disagreeable. No one could argue that I was from the establishment and you are, that you the new, weren't. You're the new establishment. You're, you see, my, no. my, my type of old-fashioned fuddy-duddy establishment has long since passed into history, whereas you are the, you are the new establishment. From this day forward, it's going to be only America first. Sounds like he's been great for uh, Britain, doesn't it? After the pageantry, the protest. This is what democracy looks like! Well, democracy actually looks like the result they had in November when Trump won. You can understand and why women might be a little bit challenged, though. He is a, an open sexual predator. He has admitted to seeking to, to sexually assault women. That is, that is not OK, in my opinion, for the leader of uh, any country. And I can understand exactly why the women in America and the women around the world felt that they needed to stand in solidarity with each other for our rights. A very large number of women voted for him. Absolutely. And, and he's, I, therefore, I, he's got the support of the American people. I and would I, die I in a ditch for those women to have their right to vote. So, so and they democratically, vote. that's what they did. But, I, and you, I mean, it's easy to understand why women feel challenged by it, though, I think. Donald Trump on his best oh, behaviour. Can't, can't cope. Do you he think he would have grabbed the hand of a male politician? 
Well, I'm not very touchy feely, so I, 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 Jacob, we could hug it out. <laughs> I'd have been a bit, a bit put out if somebody grabbed hold of my hand. I but, just don't believe um, he would ever have done that, and I think he did it to sort of overpower. Yeah, yeah, but, I don't think that's right. Uh, or he really is scared of um, slopes. I think it, it elegantly symbolised the special relationship being alive and well. I don't suppose he'll hold Mrs Merkel's hand, well, unless he's very brave. Americans are more touchy feely than we are. They, oh, they, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. didn't like Europe because of all the kissing. <laughs> Not quite, no. no but, <laughs> Am- to and like, but, Am- <laughs> but Americans are much more likely to grab you by the arm and things like that than uh, the British are. No deal for Britain is better than a bad deal for Britain. It's absolutely right. That's not absolutely right. It's absolutely at all. right. Not only right. A, a bad deal is a, b- a bad deal. A bad deal is worse no than no deal. Or no, no deal. D- no deal. What does that actually no mean? No deal it means we're reverting out. to you know World Dub- Trade Organization right. tariffs. And, and WTO terms be fine. It'll be fine. Absolutely. Tell it to the car we, industry where I live. We won't be fine. It'll be absolutely fine. We will be able to trade with the whole of the rest of the world. We'll set our own tariffs to other countries. Like we could make the cost of food. Um, considerably lower if we took tariffs off the rest of the world. Uh, the cost of clothing considerably lower. They're very big savings so all to the have. Stuff that uh, being out of they get sold uh, into Europe forty percent of well, what they produce. Of, a lot of what they produce will still be on top of that. Will still be needed. Doesn't matter. A lot of what's um, exported will still be needed because it's part of the integrated manufacturing process. They made their choice. They want to leave the EU. That's right. That's the key. To ask themselves as they go through the lobbies tonight is do they trust the people? Yeah. Quite right, and I trust the people. My dad always said, Ken Clark is a Tory you're allowed to like. Apparently you follow the rabbit down the hole and you emerge in a wonderland where suddenly countries throughout the world are queuing up to give us trading advantages. Yes, he, he really uh, liked him. He used to live around the corner from us in Birmingham. I like lots of Tories. I find it relatively <laughs> easy. <laughs> Sorry to disagree with your I'm, father. I mean, you, my dad used to say this long before you were in Parliament, Jacob. I'm sure he would reassess his list of Tories you're allowed to like now. <laughs> Thank you, Mr Speaker. Poor Mr Miliband always loses elections and he doesn't like it. We do not want to give the sense that people having voted for Brexit they felt they'd been ignored are being ignored once again. I think he is one of the ablest politicians in the country. He's everywhere I look. Every turn I call around, Alex Salmon is there. Lurking. Alice only took herself into the hole. Very able man. Prime Minister is taking virtually all of the Tory party, half the Labour Party, <laughs> and the entire country into the hole. You're obviously going to be chuffed about 2017. You think it's going pretty good. You've got Trump in America, Brexit in the uh, UK. My concern's the UK, and for Britain, this year has got off to a fantastic start. That Brexit is going ahead extremely smoothly so far. Uh, we're in a strong position, the economy's held up, all the gloomy stories have failed to materialise. No, 2017 looks Quite like it's going to be a year of legend and song. Quite a lot of people feel like it has been a bit gloomy, though. Do they? they? Well, some of the 48% of people who didn't Very vote. few. Very few. Most, most really, because I get a lot of them emailing me. Do you not get that? Well, that's probably <laughs> because you're very good at an agony, aren't you? <laughs> you, you, you t- take over. I'm um, thinking 2017 so far feels... Um, as if all the bad stuff has happened in one in one fell sweep. The whole, you know, Trump has been the president for like fifteen minutes, and it's like executive order after executive order doing absolutely but you're catastrophic great. things. In the UK, I don't feel as positive as you. I feel braced for for potential and can only hope that it's going to be okay. And I will keep hold of that hope. But at the moment, hope is all I have. Well, there's always hope. It was the last thing to come out of Pandora's box. Well, it's um, hope. It was hope. Oh, hope okay. came limping out after all the furies <laughs> and disasters had left. Hope, My hope has taken was a the last thing to come out of the box. Definitely there's limping. so much to hope about. It is oh, a wonderful yeah. uh, time for our nation. I am eternally hopeful. You should be. I You're am. right to be. <laughs>